G'day everyone, all things Bulldogs, going live again, it's Team Tuesday, it's about to come through in a couple of minutes, sometimes it comes early, already got someone on here, g'day Andrew Macker, the Twitter star, he's already got some questions on here, so let's get straight into it. Lip Boy, Hot Boy dominated New South Wales Cup off the bench last week, 200 plus run metres from 17 carries, it's not bad. How far off a debut is he? Well, good day, Andrew, mate. Um, look, I think Lip Boy's fair way down the pecking order. Um, I watched him in all three games so far. Um, and look, they put him onto an edge in the first game against Parra, and he really struggled. So did. Just the connection between himself, Perham, Skelton, and um, and Sexton really, really led in a lot of points. Leaked a lot of points against the Eels that game. Um, it was a bit better, I think, when Sam Rani come on. He helped a little bit. Um, I don't even remember what side of the field he went on, to be honest, but um, I know that he... Things went a little bit better when he came on and when Hay would come on. I think if Hopoy has, you know, coming on and playing that middle role, much easier for him to do where he can just roll up his sleeves, get into his work and, and tackle, um, you know, I think they're going to take their time with him. They need to. He'll play a fair bit. Of, he'll play between Ron Massey and the New South Wales Cup. And that's going to help us a lot. I think they know that this is going to be a real long season. Canterbury, we're using a lot of energy in defence. So eventually your tank starts to run dry. And, and that sort of happened last year. But at the same time, we were missing so many players so early and so often that it just we just ran out of juice before everyone else in the competition. And I think that there's... Having that depth there, they've got a lot of workhorses in the team. And you've got the likes of Mann and, and Sam in there at the moment. Drew Hutchison tackling people on the line. I think eventually we're going to see some players come into the side um, a lot fresher and off the New South Wales Cup. I don't think the goal is for our club to be winning New South Wales Cups or, or Jersey flag comps. They're nice. But I think the long-term goal is to... Um, drive competition for spots, which usually takes care of itself and having those players come through as NRL first graders and having more of them actually make that goal a reality. And not because um, it's easy to get into NRL. It's been way too easy for too long. Not saying it was easy by any means, but easier than it is for a lot of clubs. As I've always alluded to, there's, Penrith, there's third grade Penrith players that I think would get a start in plenty of New South Wales Cup teams and flag teams across across the competition. So, yeah, as far as a debut, I reckon there's a chance maybe this year he gets a debut, but he's going to have to develop that consistency. I don't think his place is on an edge. Um, I think they like the idea of having someone who's big like that who can, and, you know, set up their next play, you know, run hard up to the left and then play it out the right and vice versa. Um, someone that can bend the line. G'day, Benny boy. <laughs> Benny's the official graphic artist for the All Things Bulldogs, Canary Banks, our Bulldog supporters, and a whole bunch of others, and the official photographer for the Western Clydesdales. And there it is. The team list is named. We'll open her up. And get her cranking. So let's get that on there. Yeah, so Benny's also the photographer for the Western Clydesdales BMD team, which had a really good win on the weekend. And are going to be firm favourites to win the comp. Benny, you are famous, mate. Very famous. I'm going to get you on here one day and get that beautiful head of yours next to mine because I can make a lot of heads look real pretty, I can tell you that much. 
All right, can we see that? Reclaim the game. Here we go. There's no Fox. Let's just set Josh Adokar at number 23 on the extended bench. Let's get into it. How do they line up? Latrell Mitchell is the fullback. So no changes to the Bulldog side at all. None. Bronson Cherry, Toby Sexton, Jake Turpin, Katani Katoga, and Josh Adokar are the extended bench. So you'd expect that Pawasa is still feeling the effects of concussion or he is in the New South Wales Cup squad for this week. All right, so Latrell, Alex, Jack White, and Isaiah Tass and Tane Milne. It's a, it's a tough back line. Um, not the fastest back line, though. You know, having Munro in that side, Adds a lot to them as far as speed goes. Isaiah Tass, Jack White, and I'm just going to expect these centres just to try and tackle hard this week and and just do the tough stuff. Um, will we see Latrell try and bend the line instead of handing off to Alex Johnston and Tane Milne, who do a lot of work in that area? Will these guys give away silly penalties? Because they've all got it in them. Looking at the opposition, Dean Hawkins retains his spot. Really good little half, Dean Hawkins. Um, you know, I think Lachlan Elias, Dean Hawkins, neither here nor there with, with the attack. Defensively, I think Lachlan Elias is better than him, way better than Dean Hawkins. Cody, let's hope he continues to try and score off every play. We've got Tavita, Tatola, very good prop. Tommy Burgess is starting. He's been coming off the bench. Keon, he's he's been playing well in losing teams. The other guy, Jacob Post, has been steady, and Cameron Murray has been working his ass off. Michael Cheekham into the 14 with Tullis Duncan. Remember Tullis, he nearly won the game for the South against us as a like as a unknown. Shaq Mitch and Davey Moali. Now, they've dropped some Saliva Havili, which I think is very interesting. I think um, I consider Havili to be a very dangerous player. They've dropped Sean Kepi, which I also find to be very interesting as well. So they've gone for a more mobile pack with Cheekham and Duncan. Moali's not the biggest prop, and Shaq, you know, he can offload and do all that, but how many minutes is he going to play? Yeah, very interesting. I think Havili, Ilias, and Kepi would have been uh, better than three other players in this side. But anyway, each to their own. I'll get to your questions in a minute. We've got Taft, Wilson, Caraz, Crichton, Connor Tracy, Matty Burton, Drew Hutchison, Max King, Reed Marnie, Liam Knight, Bill Kickow. Now, Billy Kickow was Margot's man of the match. The dog father caught up with her last week and she wants to give her man of the match because she loves the Bulldogs, as she should. Jacob Preston, Jamin Salmon, Kurt Mann, Sam Hughes, Josh Curran and Curtis Moran. And right on the edge, putting their hands up, Bronson Cherry, Toby Sexton, Jake Turpin. Katoni Katoga and Josh Adokar. So that's the teams. What's everyone got to say? So Benny, Karaz and Wilson will dominate that right edge. Broncos and Roosters targeted that side with great success. So the South Sydney right edge defence was Milne and... Milne and Tass. Well, I think you can. I think that's where you can you can draw them in. But as you know, you know you've got to get those those when you're trying to play the numbers. Like literally, you're starting every play the ball. You really already have the numbers. If you, it just astounds me. Like when we get if a opposition team has ten gets goes down to twelve players, we still struggle more than any other team to put them away. It drives me insane. But literally. You've got your fullback behind the defensive line and you've got two at dummy half. So 
It should be 13 against 10. Every set. <laughs> it just never works out that way. Defense is such a such an art. Yeah, I think there's good times to be had um, down both edges. So um, Alex is and Jack on that left edge defense coming up against Caraz and Wilson. I think there's good times to be had there. I think there's very good times to be had also with Tracy and Crichton going up against Milne and Tass. So it's funny they their their numbers have their left left hand side as two and three, but ours have our right hand side as two and three. Makes it so hard. Why can't they all just do it the same, left and right? It's weird. Um. So yes. That's literally how they're going to match up across the field, though. Um, yeah, so you're right, Benny. There was um, – I just I just think that the South, South Sydney aren't that far off a good performance. When Tom Burgess come on last week, they um, – they started to peg things back, and the Roosters look, did look a little bit flustered and flat. I think they got a call go their way, and then they got that sort of try against um, against the run of play, which extended that lead and sort of put them out of touch when they when South were making a little go at them. Um, it's still a team full of stars, you know. That forward pack to Vita Tavola. Tavola to Tola, Tommy Burgess. It all comes off the back of him, Tom Burgess. Very tough fella to handle. Um, 196 centimetres, 124 kilos. He's a big boy. He motors along. Tackle efficiency is not too good. So there's, if we can tire them out, play really um, disciplined football again, we can defeat that side for sure. And I think that's going to be the key. I, I really, look, I think Souths are going to play more conservatively this week. I think that's a fair thing to make. Um Andrew Macker, hey going? I'm sure he'll play, but heard kick out carrying elbow and knee issue after the game. How would you reshuffle if he was out? Yeah, well, he did have that that elbow issue. Um, someone sent me a message, but I don't know who. Um, yeah, look, well, Katag is there. I think he comes straight in. Let's look at it. So if Billy Army's out, he's playing on the left. I think Katoga's been playing left edge as well in New South Wales Cup. I'd say if that's the case, Katani Katoga comes straight into to the bench and Josh Curran moves into the edge to start the game. Or they... They may even move Jamin Salmon to the edge and just have Kurt Mann play as that lock, that middle lock ball-playing player and then use Curtis in the same role. So I think that's how they would do it because whilst Josh Curran is an absolutely an absolute gun on the edge and can go onto that left or right edge, they can play either side. But I think they'll want to keep the cohesion there. Jamin's played quite a fair bit of left or right edge. Um, and in a lot of the opposed scrimmages, it, the information coming out of those scrimmages during the preseason was that Jamin, this is where mixed rugby chat started the uproar amongst the Bulldogs and the Penrith fans, you know, that we bought Salmon and now we're putting him in reserve grade. He was doing his scrimmages against Preston and Kickout. So you want to get, you know, he's not starting ahead of them. So I think Jamin would actually go into that role, and they might um, they might elevate Kurt Mann to start, 
and and keep Curran and and bring Kutoga onto the bench. That's how I think they would do it. Um, I couldn't see them putting Bronson or or Sexy or anyone like that. Jake Turpin maybe he they might elevate him and say, well look, we'll just put Jamin into the edge, keep everything the same, and then. Um, you know, elevate Kurt into the lock position and, and put Turpin on as a as a small forward um, hooker because Jakey Turpin tackles like a gun in the middle. Like that's his forte, is his defence. He doesn't miss too many. And he's been doing some pretty good hits in New South Wales Cup. He, we haven't been losing because of him. We, we definitely get a bun, a, an abundance of energy when Hayward gets on the park. But the sting's out of the game, and that's why he's able to come in and do what he does. Um, Shannon Green. Kick out on Hawkins. If he plays similar to last week, could really shut him down early. G'day, Shannon. How you going, mate? Or, oh, I don't know. Sorry, lady, man, <laughs> mate. That'll do. Um, thanks for the question. Um, yeah, I agree. Look. What really army kick out this displayed against the Titans was a really Titans was a really important moment in his in his career with Canterbury. Now he's finally had a preseason. He's finally got some fitness and getting into round three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, you'll start to see some really big performances from the kicks if he can stay injury free. And that's what he does. He chases the hell out of everything. You know. My mate calls kick out lazy. He's not lazy. He's just a beast. And when the beast isn't fully wound up, it runs out of puff. And when you run out of puff, you just can't make your assignments. It's just the way it is. So the, when the beast, the beast is humming at the moment, and hopefully he doesn't have those injuries that Andrew mentioned. If he can sit there and contribute the same way against Hawkins. You know, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm pretty sure that Kikau will make life hard for every halfback and every fullback in every game whilst he is fit. <laughs> no drama, Shannon. No worries, brother. Um, Shannon just confirmed that he is a bloke. Not a chick. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, I really think that that's what he's going to do. That will be the game plan. Lead, lead the kick chase. Really put pressure on those edges. He he just hums across the from the inside out to try and, you know, tighten up those edges and scare people into passing the ball early, scaring the opposition into, you know, if they take him on, he crunches them, makes them pay. And sometimes you get a crafty player when he's under a bit of fatigue that'll be able to, you know, step around him and stuff like that or anticipate him coming and play around it. I've seen that. I've seen him exposed that way. I've seen all Penrith edges or former edges or people that play for Penrith, they all play that same style. It's actually a style. Um G'day, Paulie Walnuts. Good to see you back on, mate. And g'day, Dan. G'day, brother. Yeah, so um, you think Lip Oil get a shot this year off the off the pine? Yeah, three or four games tops maximum. Cool. I think he might get a couple of games. Maybe that would be the maximum. He's just going to need to develop in New South Wales Cup. And I think keeping Lip Boy Hot Boy in the middle is going to be the key to him. Playing him on the edge, just think it's too hard for him at this point. And he showed that he's, there was just literally no cohesion there and that Parramatta side ran through us. Um, Dan's heard that Kikau's hyperextended his elbow name but may not play. Well, he did hyperextend it a little bit in the game and... It didn't affect him on the day, like, or well, it obviously was hurting, and they strapped him up. But um, yeah, I, I think he'll play. 
I think you'll play. I'm hoping you'll play. <laughs> um, so Paulie reckons Lip Boy will get a few games this week, this year. Let's hope for uh, Hip Boy that you're right about that, Paulie. Um, so we've covered off how I would reshuffle things. Um, yeah, thumbs up, brother. So, yeah, it's looking good for the dogs this week. We're going to have every opportunity, but Jared Sutton is the ref. Um, now, if anyone, look, I think we're all across why Jared Sutton is the appointment we dislike, just like Chris Sutton, who I think we've won one game under and lost about 16. Jared, since about 2014, we've lost, I think, 18 games and he, we've won one, we've won three. And against South Sydney, we've lost four. And in two of those games, we've had people sent off or, or send me into crucial points. And last year wasn't helped by the fact that we, we lost the Fox after about 10 minutes when we were looking on top in the middle um, and playing a style which they didn't like. But we couldn't keep up, obviously. Then had to shuffle positions and they, they really exposed the likes of Alamotti on the left and Jackson Torpenay. Um, I thought moving Burton out to centre might have been a better play considering we had Josh Reynolds in the side and Kyle Flanagan. But that's, you know, I think a lot of people agree that would have been a good idea. But that's going back in time. Um, Sutton has basically been horrible for us ever since. You know, sometimes we win the penalty count, but it's when he gives them. A lot of the penalties we get will be on first tackle, second tackle. When he penalises us, it's always fourth tackle, fifth tackle. Sin bins. When he's called a try, it's it's try straight away for the opposition. I sound like a really passionate, you know, bot in, with my implicit bias for the dogs. But there's lots of this stuff that I've gone back and just watched it over and over again and gone, no, nah, this is actually happening. What, what we're seeing is happening here. Um. We're sitting there getting absolutely screwed by this referee who said he was a South Sydney member. Can't find where that information was, but I'm assured that it's um, 100% true. He, now the thing when it comes to South Sydney, I'll get to you in a moment there, Paulie, because I like what you've written there. When it comes to South Sydney, no side has, has got as many penalties as um, from Jared Sutton than South Sydney. And South Sydney's win rate under Sutton is second only to the Melbourne Storm, who have been very, very consistent in winning premierships and stuff ever since before he started refereeing. So it's been a long time they've been successful. Um, Souths have had some lean years in that period, but still won under Sutton. When it comes to Jared Sutton, he will penalise us late in the tackle count. And when we score tries, nearly, I think 75% of them go up as no try. No try. So when they're 50 50s, they go as a no try. You can go check all this if you want and tell me I'm wrong. And I'm happy. And then I'll just put it down to being a biased fan. But. Um, I've checked all his stats. You can check it out at the Rugby League Project. Very good place to go and find out all the stats. And it will tell you that he is an absolute cheat when it comes to South Sydney versus Canterbury since 2015. I don't know if it's gambling. I don't think so. I just think just ever since he was sort of scared by the bottles being thrown at him, uh, in a game where he brought South Sydney into that game through fourth and fifth tackle penalties. I was also the pocket referee in that game as well, um, who I can't remember. He was just as at fault. They should never have got close to us that game. That was our revenge from the 2014 Grand Final, and they took it away from us. And I think it affected our side. I think it cost us big time. 
just like when um Jamal when they said that Sal, Jamal Andrus, you know, that Soward was impeded against the Dragons, we hadn't beaten him in ages. And we'd finally come from nowhere to win that match and it set us back a, a hell a hell of a long way. I think that was in 2011. And we didn't get over it. it. May have been even in 2000. I think no, it was 2010. Yeah, we didn't get over it. Until 2012. Anyway, I'm going on about shit now. Let's get on to it. Paulie, I, the thing I liked about our performance against the Titans is we didn't win from a sparkling play and long-range tries. We dominated physically and with our kick pressure, kick chase, and ball control. We can repeat that every week, 100% Paulie. We just need to repeat the effort areas versus Souths, kick early, isolate Latrell and make him work out of his own end all game. We will just wear them down, Bulldogs, for 13 plus. Well, that'll be the the idea, Paulie. But I see the hardest thing about doing executing that play is you've got to win the ruck. If you don't win the ruck, meaning if Hawkins and Cody get to kick without pressure because their forwards are, are getting up early and playing that ball quickly, which is they will do at different times, then they're able to kick us deep into our end and then we can't get out of it. And then we've got to rely on Matt Burton to try and kick us out of it, which he's done so many times. There's so many games where if you go through the stats where we've been dominated in the metres and the post-contact, but we win win the metres overall in the kicking or, or get very close to it from a lot less possession. And it's actually kept us in a lot of games. Round one was no different. We only got a chance to win that game due to Burton's kicking long. Because what they did, they kicked deep for Taft because we couldn't control their, their play the ball speed um, from their forwards and stuff and from their offloads. We couldn't control that. So they kicked deep, which meant, and then they really had a great line and just kept Blake Taft pinned. Karaz was, did a lot of runs in that game, but really couldn't make his average yardage hit ups, like average meters per hit up. They kept him pinned. They kept Wilson pinned. Although those guys made the most metres, they simply didn't have the um, – they just didn't have the ability to get it done, um, to get us out of there. And then our forwards were just doing too much work, having to track back further. And, you know, and then Burton's kicking deep, but they were making metres off their yardage. We contained them pretty well. We lost the Fox with the injury in that first half, which didn't help. And it just made it impossible. So the point I'm making is, is if we don't stop their ruck, which is not easy to stop, believe me, Tom Burgess is a hard boy to bring down. And Tatola's not that much easier. And Cam Murray, his biggest attribute is his play the ball, is his play the ball speed. So then you got Cook coming out of dummy half. So this is where they get a chance to sort of play their natural game because Canterbury are that smaller pack, yeah? So this is where it's going to be a contest. If if we can't keep them contained and, and have good sets out of our own out of our own end, then we can't isolate Latrell, is what I'm saying. For us to isolate Latrell, we have to win the middle and win the ruck. And we did that against the Titans, which was fantastic. And, and they got some big boys. Like Big Mo, Tino, um, and Keenan Palacia coming off the off the bench, plus the likes of the Sammies and that. Yeah, I agree with you 100% is that we played a lot smarter. So Reed Marnie kicked for territory using the wind at Belmore to his to his advantage rather than trying to go for the, the Hollywood 40-20 every time, okay? So that's why we were able to wear the Titans down because – they had to use so much petrol in that first half. They were running against the wind, which is like running uphill at Belmore. Um, and they kept coughing up possession because we forced errors from our pressure, from our kick chase, from all those little one percenters. We had the wind at our back and we made use of it. And we got them down 12-0. Um, I thought they tried their hearts out, the Titans, in defence. This is what I mean. They lost 32-0. They got obliterated. But they actually weren't that bad in defence. 
it was because they kept coughing up possession, they couldn't handle our pressure. So we ended up grinding them out. They got tired and then we scored some points. Um, I don't think we're going to get it that easy against South Sydney. I just think they're, they're, more, they're more cohesive in their forward pack. Um, all this drama around them at the moment, the only way they're going to silence it is if they beat the Bulldogs and then go on a bit of a run. And they got Jared Sutton to help them do it. I think it's going to be a very tough game. I feel it in my bones that we can win this game. I really believe we can. Um, if we play smart, we can we grind it with them, we stay with them and stick to our defensive efforts that we have been. It's been the line speed of that edge. It's been the way they've been working together. They're, they've got trust. They're not, they're not doing stupid things where one's just coming out of and doing things on their own because they've lost trust for each other. They're actually doing it together, and that's what's looked really good in spite of the scoreboard in the first two games. So they've done a good job in that regard, and I think they can win. It's going to take a lot of that for it to happen. So, yeah, I hope we can wear them down the same way as we did against the Titans. I think their aim will be to do that to us. That's how the Sharks beat us. It's how the Eels beat us. They only got four tries on us, yet they dominated possession. And, you know, um, I think Souths will be looking to grind in this game and, and to play a power game through the middle. They'll look to do what they do, cook off the fast play the balls. They're gonna, there's going to be some fire in this game. I can feel it. There's going to be um, times where our boys... We've shown that they don't want to take a step back. We were got our players were niggling and carrying on in that game against the Titans. They let that little fullback know every time he got the ball or made a mistake that he he'd done it. They pushing his face in the ground. They were playing quite dirty, to be honest. But I didn't mind it. It's like you, you come to Belmore, that's what you're going to cop. Our fans are here to see us win, and that's the only thing that's happening at Belmore. Shannon, I'm with you on Sutton. We rarely get the 50-50 calls and he just deflates the team eventually. Yeah, 100%, Shannon, 100%. Um, yeah, I can't really add to that. That's the thing. And, look, that's what I liked about what Serato said after the Sharks game. It was the first time he'd actually come out and had a bit of a whinge about the refs. And I like the accountability that he showed. It, because that means he's telling his team, it, we have to be better than the ref sort of thing. If you're not out there competing on every single play, you're not going to get the 50-50 calls. It's always going to go with the team with the momentum and with the field position. It's the same with when the ball spills out this year. If it spills out, if there's hands all over the ball, if they don't see a, a hand make a little flick action, if they all just sit there and apply pressure, and they work on this through their wrestling, right? If the ball spills out, there's no point challenging it because it's going to be, um, you're going to lose your challenge and it's going to be caught or knock on. But let's see if Gerard Sutton calls us for strips straight up that we then have to challenge to try and win back because that will be your indicator right there because all season... The strip, and this has been pretty consistent in most games. The strip, every what I consider to be a strip, when there's hands on the ball and it comes out to me, it's a strip, more so than a loose carry. But they're calling them all loose carries. They're not penalising them for strips unless they can see their hand actually do this. So I've seen one all um, all season so far. I think it's one, maybe two where they've actually called it a strip when it's being challenged. But most of them are all getting called straight away as knock-ons. Whereas Jared Sutton, he's likely to say Canterbury knock, um, the Bulldogs have stripped the ball. Two in the tackle strip is what he'll say. Penalty to, to South Sydney. That's what I'm expecting. So we'll have to defend our line. For Christ knows how long. Um, 
Yeah, Jack White worries me. I, I think his role is just he's just going to run hard, try and tackle hard, and not play too much footy. Um, ben Ruan. G'day, Ben. How you going, mate? I'd be shaking in my boots if I was Taft. Surely Latrell will be looking to put him in his place. Yeah, L Latrell, you'd expect Latrell is going to come out firing. Um, I remember the game in 2022. I felt we we sort of kept edging in front, got some really good tries that night. And then there was a, this little um, offload from uh, Nicarima, Cody Nicarima onto Latrell, and he burst through and made Matt Burton and the Fox look like little kids. And then they got a late try on the edge to um to seal it at the end of 2022, towards the end of the season, a game we should have won. Um, yeah, Blake Taft's not stopping the troll one on one, is he? It's not happening. It's just not going to happen. Um, but I think what um what Paulie said, if we can win enough of that ruck, where we can put their kickers under pressure. Then get a good set of our own, get a deep kick in um, with that great chase, and and really put the pressure on the trail. That's where you tire him out. He just tires. He can't. He can't keep it up. He, he makes a lot of try saving tackles. The trail. They actually don't. Um, he gets called lazy and whatever else. He runs out of puff and doesn't make it to the contest um, as a fullback, as a lot of them do. But you know. Whenever he's in the vicinity, he doesn't usually let him get through. He's pretty good defensively. We'll just kick early to Latrell all night and tie. He's a lazy ass out. <laughs> I think we're not going to see that same win at a core. Um, we usually don't. It's rather protected in there. You get a bit of swirl. I think the Burton bombs will come into come into play. Uh, <laughs> Ben thinks that's funny. Um, yeah, it it all depends, you know. Uh, turning them around. Look, if you if you watch last week's game in that first half, we turned them around all that first half because we had the bruise. The week before, we didn't we weren't smart with our kicking game in the first half. In the second half, Nico had that twenty five to forty kilometre wind at his back at Toyota Park, the shark at Shark Park. He turned us around and it took the wind out of us. But that was in the second half. Um, and I think we did that really well in the first half against the Titans. It's just going to depend on the conditions of the day and um, and how well we're going. I, I hope Marnie kicks for the, for the open spaces and plays the territory game and, you know, put the 40-20 away. He's, that's to me is... Um, as he gets more confident, he'll pull one out at the right time. But he did four really early last year, and I think and after the, I think after about round 10, there was none, and it just put us under pressure most of the time. We'd spend, you know, there'd be 10 sets where we've only had two or three of them, and then he's doing that to try and win back ascendancy, sort of taking shortcuts. They need to grind it back. So there you go. That's my thoughts. Lots of good thoughts being shared, though, on the game, which I really appreciate. Um, a lot of us probably want to look forward to the Roosters as well, um, with the Fox coming back, who comes into the side. Does Blake Taff maintain his spot? Well, a lot of that will be determined by the performance of Taff and Wilson because I think they're the two that are potentially going to make way, and also on how Connor Tracy goes against the Rabbits this Friday. But I've got a feeling, um, you know, the way we're playing, the, the fact that we're a defence-first attitude at the moment, which is obvious to see, Tracy's got the bigger body. He can make, he can bend the line a bit more and probably offers us more as that type of working class fullback at this time um whereas 
if when we're humming, if we're, we're in a position where where we're humming. A player like with the skills of Blake Taft is fantastic in in attack. But just where we are and what we want to do at the moment, I think Connor Tracy is probably uh, when the fox comes back into the side, which he will. Until he plays and plays himself out of the team pretty much, he's going to be in it. And for people who – a lot of people have made comments on the Fox that he's done nothing for Canterbury and all this sort of shit. It's absolute rubbish. He scored tries that no one in our team in the last 10 years would have scored. He's been utilised well. And wingers make the errors when you lose the ruck and they're the last line of defence and they don't trust the bloke inside them. It's just the way it is. Bellamy would pick the fox. That's a, that's all I need. Anyway, um, I think Tracy will be, for me, I'd be putting him at fullback at some stage in the next few weeks when the fox comes back and probably Pete Wilson there just because he offers that better um, yardage and, and he's still very fast as well. So you've got the speed. Tracy's just as fast as Taft. Um, not as good as a ball player, um, and I don't think he reads the game as well as Blake Taft, but I do think he just offers us that more stability defensively. But one thing we have to suggest is our edges, and that looks so confident on both sides. Blake Taft as the fullback has probably got a lot to do with that. So that's one thing that we need to consider. And I'm sure the coaches, if, if this back four here, if, this, if our defensive line are like, Blake's doing a fantastic job marshalling us. You know, we've only had two misreads in three games. And that's the truth. There's been two misreads on our edges in three games. Jamin Salmon had a misread. And I think um, Drew and someone else had a misread in the second game. That's been it. Then there was Drew's in the trial. So if you include the trial, I've seen three misreads in four games. That's unheard of for us for a very long time. Even Des, the team Des had was doing, having misreads every game. Peter Weber, Friday, 23 degrees, light winds, fast track. There you go, Pete. Well, it might, might be a good, a good place to turn them around. You never know. G'day, Jaden. Jaden's got his podcast on Spotify, everyone. Look it up. It's a very good, good listen. Makes a lot of sense. Hard to argue with anything he says. But I'm sure some of you will find a way. <laughs> um, for me, I'd put Tracy at the back with Fox and Wilson on the wings. Peter seconds that. And that's hard for Pete to second that because he actually loves Blake Taft because his name is Blake. Blake Taft. Pete wrote a song about Blake. G'day, Shelley. Man and current chase on Brimson effort plays not there last year. 100%. Yeah, our kick chase has been pretty bloody shocking. Look, I saw Tavita do it in a couple of games, but he, they stepped around him and made him look stupid. Just like individually chasing. Kick out did a bit of that coming back into the squad, but wasn't fit and had no cohesion or sync or there was no communication. <laughs> And got exposed. They stepped around him. Yeah. They, when we did those sort of efforts in the past couple of years, we just made every player look like old Darren Lockyer, you know, just step around and go past him. Yeah, good point, Dan. Um, Kurt May has been – mate, I think he's missed one tackle in three games and made about 100. Plenty going against your opinions, Jaden. Oh, I find it hard. <laughs> um, you articulate yourself well. You make a case for it. You show a rationale. That's all you got to do. It's better than the slander that people put out there. Oh, fucking sack the coach. Piss Taff off his shit. Get rid of Hutchison his shit. Obviously, honestly, just... Calm down, Pete. Um, I want to get back to the Kurt Mann thing, though. Yeah, Dan, 100%, mate. I've actually had him in our top top two players the first two games, and he was in, he was in my top four on the weekend. There was obviously kick out, 
Taran Karaz. I couldn't split them, to be honest. And Kurt Mann was just behind the place getters. So I think Kurt, you know, a lot of people had doubts about him. Um, he's got a vast array of skills. There's a lot he can do. But in that middle, he just laps it up because he's got the leg speed. He knows how to tackle. He knows where to put his head. He knows where to, how to chop them down. And he works with the other players well. He's quick off to get up to marker. He's rarely left, you know, waiting. He's so often I've seen our Canterbury guys without markers because they're just left on the ground and unable to do anything in desperation. Kurtz finds a way to get up. Um, and he's quite silky with the passes. And he doesn't panic, you know. He's quite happy to grind teams in. He knows how to grind. Um and you don't play 165 games of NRL unless you've got something. So, fucking beautiful. Paul, yet yeah, we just have to repeat what we did and say if we can't repeat that, and South will have plenty of good ball footy and we won't win because they have Latrell. So, we'll have to repeat that gameplay. I reckon we'll pump South. They haven't hit rock bottom yet. Oh, well, I hope you're right, Paulie. Um, but as I said, repeating what we did against the Titans may not be as easy. It's going to come. I think the mindset's the same, though, and I 100% agree. Um, going back to what um, uh, what somebody said, I think it was Shannon. Anyway, going back to basically doing all that hard kick chase, um, all the one percenters kicking smarter, keeping that ruck under control, not giving away silly bloody penalties. That's going to help us. And just, yeah, grind, grinding them into submission. Because, you know, I, like, you expect Souths are going to score some points against us. But I'm, you know, I'm used to seeing Souths putting Alex Johnston over without people laying a hand on him. If you go back over the last three four, three or four years, like they just create that overlap so well. They're able to do that so well. And hopefully this isn't the game where that they expose that with us. If we can slow down their ruck, I just I just think there must Blake Taft must be doing a really good job marshalling them and he'll know what's coming because he's been a part of that system and I don't think much has changed they're not as fast as our back line so we've got them for speed I think our edges are faster than their edges I think that Preston and Kikiao are faster and stronger on the edge than Kaloa Matangi and um, and Host so I think it's going to be one through the middle I suppose every game is I love Rattrell though he's a legend don't get me wrong yeah I like him too mate um, it gets me down a little bit when people go on about how he plays the race card and stuff. I think he just says what he thinks. But anyway, I like Latrell and I hope he does well and I hope he plays for news. He gets into some form after this game and plays well for Canterbury. I mean for um for New South Wales and Origin. That's what I hope. Or even better, that Stephen Crichton and gets gets the centre position. I think Katoni Staggs has got to be a centre too. He's shown a lot of bloody fortitude. Even in losing teams, he's been much more involved this year. Yeah, with Marnie, it's like he just needs to not try as hard. Going for the big plays, that's what he did on Saturday and was his best game for us. 100%, Paulie. Seen that, seen that together, 100%. And then what did he do? So it's funny, they're criticising his 45-degree runs, which cramps up the edges, and I get it. But I used to watch Cameron Smith do that all the time. The difference was is that Cameron had players coming back inside and players also running lines on the out. So he had every, everything was in motion, and that's where Canterbury are just – they don't know each other well enough at this stage. Um, sometimes he's just got it wrong and he's just searching for things to do. But then when he 
ran straight. People don't expect Breed Marnie from that situation where there's actually got a ruck there off a fairly – it was a good quick play the ball, but it wasn't ultra quick where he just took them on through the middle and um, and set up a try. Like, he hasn't done that for a long time for Canterbury, or if ever. Um, so, yeah, I think that Reed Marnie has a lot to offer. He was the next in line for Origin after Harry Grant. Should have played Origin, except he then got injured in training. He's got the best pass off the deck that I've seen, but some of his attributes have been lost sort of in translation because the amount of work he's done and the and how hard he's trying has affected his overall game. And it was, I think, taking the captaincy off him has helped him a lot, and he looks fitter than he's ever looked. Stephen Croisi, g'day, Stephen. Oh, nice to meet you, mate. Um, I'd leave Tath guys, as I said, give him a chance to do the job he was brought over to do. Nothing worse than knee-jerk decisions, guys. Sorry, Jaden. <laughs> Man, he's doing well and putting in. Shelly, I'm not still not sold on Hot Joe, but I know why he's picked over six years. Tackle on Cleese, Huss, one-on-one, -on -one, two metres from the line is the reason. 100%. No fun if we all agree, Stephen. Stephen! It's watching some show on Netflix and... Uh, yeah, there was this – the girl had a little um, toy she called Stephen. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave it at that. Weird show too. Um, yeah, look, as, that's the sort of – as I'm saying, they're going to leave him for this week. And, they'll say, and if we win again, I'd say he stays in. I think for the balance of the side where we are, where we are, you know, if we beat the Titans and beat Rabbits, we've beaten two teams that are probably bottom four at the moment, the way they're playing. Um, Tracy might be the option right now, but I think Taft is the fullback you go for when your team's humming along and and is doing things right and the forwards, the forwards are holding up and everything's going well most of the games and they're having their fair share of attack. I think he comes into his own. Um, but... Tracy at this point, I think, just offers that little bit more stability. And then there's the devil. I was playing devil's advocate with myself, Stephen, because I also said that um, Taft's probably the one who's marshalling the de the defence. So like the defence has been the, our most impressive trait, especially on those edges. Only given up two two tries in three games on the edge. That your fullbacks communicating some stuff pretty well if that's happening. And I think he reads the game really well. Um, where's Mark O'Connell? He's driving the bus, Brad. He's a bus driver. But don't worry, he'll, um, you'll see him on all things Bulldogs and everywhere else. He knew I was going to start while he, while he was at work. That's why I'm still going on. I'm giving him a chance to come on and shake things up, Brad. You're watching fifth, this 15 minutes behind, so your comments are for 15 minutes ago. Yeah, that's what happens to me too, mate. Um, I want to go back to Shelley. I'm still not sold on Hutcho, but I know why he's picked over sexy. He's tackle on Cleese Huss. 100%. 100%. And this is why I was sort of talking Tracy. Hutchison, by round 10 or 11, is going to start feeling the effects of all the defence that he's done. I believe. And this is where you'll start to see. Now, if we've won four or five of those first 11 matches, we're still in the hunt for the season. There's still a chance of playing finals. But that's when the, the, our key, if we haven't had too many injuries, those rotations out of New South Wales Cup, the likes of Ted Avano, who seems to get better every week physically, um, the likes of Poasa and Patolo, they're all going to play their part. Harrison Edwards has got to come in. Um, Lip Boy Hot Boy will be there. Um, Jack Todd. These guys may get that chance to come in and help the side. Um, not all together, hopefully, because of injuries, but just filter them in off the bench one by one, and we can see um, and just sort of 
have that energy come into our side as we need it. And I think that's when the likes of a Sexton comes into the halves. That's when the likes of a Turpin comes onto the bench because they will be able to provide energy and stability. We won't lose too much. And we might even gain something out of these guys because they've been hopefully banging down the door. I know we're struggling in cup at the moment, but I think they will warm into this long season and play finals because there's so much talent there. they just got to build that resilience. If we don't have those injuries, they'll do well. First grade will hopefully um, keep in contention. That's what we want from this side. They keep in contention and make the finals. It's 2024. It's our year. But it's a big if. Um, Stephen, I actually loving our wingers coming out of our red zone, really putting in Karaz, line break, and Wilson. And Wilson, a really strong and good partnership, I feel. Yeah, well, I've, I've just noticed that they're, they're really trying to keep that contingency going. And so I don't think he wants to move Blake Wilson off the wing, you know. Um, you want to keep Karaz and Wilson together. If our forwards can do their job and, and control that ruck enough, Wilson, Karaz, Crichton and Tracy can all make yardage and get our forwards off to a better start, meaning that our forwards don't have to run back as far. Our forwards make metres when we get when we hold the ball, we had some field position, and then our backs eventually were able to do their job. Um, yeah. Finishing that point on Hutcho, he's there for his defence. Eventually it's going to probably burn him out and then they'll bring the likes of Sexton and, and Haywood through the through the um through the grades, maybe even BBO as well. So there you go. We've gone an hour guys. I think that might be long enough for us this week. Um really love the interaction from you all. It's been fantastic. Um if you've got people who want to talk about the Bulldogs and don't want to just slander the coach and slander the players. We get less of that usually after a win, but um, I'm, I'm here to talk about how we can improve and to identify the good stuff that we've seen and also the stuff we can improve on as well. Um, not about making excuses for the team. It's just providing reasons. You know, Look, I think every win for us is going to be still be an upset at this point. And, yeah, thanks, Stephen. I can't wait for it either, man. Good Friday every year. Always work out a way to watch it live. <laughs> Even though um, families and that might want to do other stuff on Good Friday. It's supposed to be a day of no work. You have a good night too, Peter. You should be on here playing that guitar. My guitar is still here. I haven't packed it away yet. I am moving everyone, so it takes a while. but. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening in. Jesus will get us home. That's right. Good chat, Jaden. Thanks, everyone. Take care. I'll see you on the other side. Oh, I'm going to do a um, NRL media watch on Braith and Esther. So look out for that. Because I think the NRL needs to look at something regarding Braith and Esther as a commentator who's also a player manager think it's a huge conflict of interest the way he goes about it but anyway probably for the same reasons that people say Phil Gould shouldn't commentate but I don't really see Phil Gould put too much pressure on individuals but anyway unless they're superstars where Braith only attacks the little guy not the superstar big difference anyway have a good day everyone thanks Paulie I'll flash that up for people to have a quick look. Yeah. 100% poorly, but I don't listen to a lot of that media. There's a lot of assumption, but no one really knows. Maybe they just don't have, have what it takes at this point. It happens. Maybe they've come to the end of their tenure. They need to get a few new players in the system. Maybe they need Phil Gould. <laughs> All right, take care, everyone. Have a good one.